Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I tested during a live stream the Giulio Dondi shuttle which is the same shuttle that's been handed down from generation to generation of Kerbal Space Program player uh, from the Component Space Shuttle to the Mike NZ shuttle, the Dylan Semro shuttle, the Space Audi shuttle which I most recently used. This is now the Giulio Dondi shuttle. It is different but it is the same model that has been adapted once again uh, through all of these iterations, uh, but the wings are attached to body there and that gives you a hint of uh, something that's very different. Uh, Giulio Dandi created a special version of Ferrum Aerospace Research that's not too different from the original Ferrum Aerospace, but just enough so that the shuttle would work properly. And so you have to get that special version of Ferrum Aerospace for this to work. And there are other peculiarities like the landing, gear. for some reason the nose gear is attached even though we have a separate nose gear part there, but we also have the main landing gear separate that we have to attach. So there I am attaching that. So there are other peculiarities like that. That's not quite like the Space Audi shuttle in particular. And then uh, the vertical stabilizer is always interesting, uh, but it does attach like that. And there's actually a rudder panel part, which you shouldn't use. And then there is a tail control surface part. So that's the rudder uh, part the rudder panel part, but this is the tail control surface part and that's the one you should use and it'll snap onto that node there. Uh, so that's how you'll be able to tell, I guess. Now, if you are trying to use this shuttle and if there's interest, I'll try to do an install video, though that should be pretty quick. Um, if you're trying to use this shuttle, then you need to delete RO engines because RO engines will try to overwrite the engines in this shuttle, and the ones I just put on there are actually the RO engine ones, those won't work. Well, they might work if you're launching it, but they won't work if you're trying to launch it with Giulio Dondi's own shuttle script, the KOS script that he has. And uh, incidentally, the little Kuban antenna, I couldn't figure out how to get it on right, so I didn't. Uh, anyway, I put in 15 tons of payload, which is safe to the International Space Station, that's the maximum International Space Station load. Uh, but actually we'll be going out to 28.6 degrees straight out from Cape Canaveral. Here I'm putting on the decouplers for the boosters and you have to be very careful to get them on right. And so that's the proper location for reference if you're trying to do that. I'll put the links to the mod in the video description, uh, but there are some peculiarities to installing it. Anyway, the boosters themselves should snap onto an internal node. And after I get the nose cone and launch clamps on, I tweak the launch script to the correct inclination that I want, which will be 28.6 degrees, but I don't touch anything else. So this is the initialization of uh, Giulio Dandi's uh, launch script for the shuttle. This is OPS1, and I'll link the launch script in the video description as well. And so here we go. Well, here we don't go actually. So that's the error that's caused by using the RO engines instead of the engines that come with the mod. And so we have to get rid of RO engines and its uh, replacement for the RS-25 and actually use the engine for the mod. mod. So if you want to launch it on your own, you don't have to worry about this. But if you want to use it with the special ascent guidance that is provided by that KOS script, then you do need to make sure that you have the right engines and make sure they match in versions. So you can have any version of the RS-25 you like, but make sure all three engines actually match. So there we go, we've got the RS-25D slash E's. And also make sure that the fuel priority on the body is low so that the engines do not accidentally take the fuel cell propellant and use that. Uh, otherwise you're going to not have any fuel cell propellant once you reach orbit. So initially it seems to be set so that the orbiter drains first for some reason. All right, so there's the ascent guidance that uh, this provides. It's very fancy and meant to simulate the real thing. And of course I have my own KOS script for the shuttle. And my own KOS script is not meant to be super realistic. I mean, it's meant to be good enough. At least it does this turn a little bit nicer, but anyway, <laughs> do it in my own defense. Uh, but uh, that rotation, uh, but anyway. Uh, mine's is just meant to make sure that it looks good. Uh, my, the purpose of my launch script was to make sure that I could make cinematics so that I wouldn't have a UI up. And so it wouldn't make any sense for me to have a display like this anyway. The goal was to not have the UI up and to be able to record videos like that. Uh, also, it was meant to get to orbit with as much Delta V in the shuttle as possible. 
This is meant to be realistic. Uh, the Severtrons need some work. I only put the nose cone Severtrons there, not the ones on the bottom of the boosters, but those tend to be weird. So, yeah, uh, we'll probably need some additional Severtrons to help those separate properly as usual. Uh, but anyway, everything working out quite well. On the ascent guidance, the little circle is 30 seconds in advance. The triangle is where we're at on the thing right now. And of course, it's got to try to correct to keep us close to the line is the goal. Um, so if after 30 seconds it sees that we're going to be off somewhere weird, it'll correct in the opposite direction, etc. And uh, it does throttle to 104%. The engines are rated to 109%. That's why it's not using the full throttle on the throttle range. And we have engine cut off. And actually, it completes the script here. It doesn't do the OMS burn for you. Uh, so it does the external tank separation. And then it'll flash the result basically down there. And so there it has the result. And you just click the X mark uh, to end the script. And then do the OMS burn yourself. Uh, so we get to orbit here, and then I make sure that we uh, time warp so that we are in line with Cape Canaveral, and then we'll try the re-entry script. And to do the re-entry, uh, there is a deorbit planner. It doesn't do the deorbiting for you, and so I've time warped the whole day to make sure that we're perfectly in line with Cape Canaveral, and then you have to create a maneuver node, otherwise the deorbit planner won't work. So I tried to run the deorbit planner, and it wouldn't run. And that's because it needs a node to work off of. The scripts have to be in a particular folder. They're in the ships slash script folder. And there's OPS3 underscore deorbit.ks. And what it does is it gives you the green numbers where it wants to be. It wants the like, negative uh, 0 0.01 degrees. And then that speed and then that distance, the 7,487 kilometers. And what you're going to do is you're going to tweak the node to give it those numbers. Right now, the actual numbers are in red. And so to tweak the angle, you will change the periapsis. So you'll make it more retrograde or less retrograde. And then to tweak the bottom number, the distance, you're going to move the node. And then hopefully the middle number will just turn out all right uh, if you've got those two correct. So this is what I'm doing here. And ultimately, I get those close enough and it is satisfied. Now, there is a caveat in that I looked up the actual uh, entry numbers for the shuttle, and it was rarely just negative one. Uh, it was usually around negative 1.2, and that's in red for this. So the normal shuttle entry is negative 1.2, so there might be some tweaking on that re-entry calculator that is necessary. The most severe was actually for a Hubble servicing mission. That was all the way up negative two. So it varies quite a lot. Anyway, here I'm dumping the gas because I forgot to get rid of the payload. And you can only activate the entry script, which is OPS3.ks, when you're below 122 kilometers, which is what they had as the entry interface point. Uh, so then you can activate it, otherwise it won't let you activate it. Uh, so here is the very complicated OPS3 entry guidance, and you should click the uh, DAP Instead of off, it needs to be on auto eventually. Giulio Dandi himself was in my uh, stream telling me what to do, uh, thankfully, because otherwise I wouldn't know what to do. Anyway, so it's on auto, auto flaps, and it will auto land everything. So we will see that in action. Uh, but you see, because we had such a shallow entry angle, uh, it's tilting quite a lot. It can do this. The shuttle could do more than this. It could actually invert to some extent uh, if it was really necessary. But we really don't want to see this because it's thinking it's coming in too fast. And the reason it's thinking it's coming in with too much energy is because uh, our descent angle was probably a little bit high. I think at the, looking back at the data and seeing what might have gone wrong here, I think that's the reason. Uh, but we'll have to work on that and do further testing to verify. As suggested from the fact that we switched it to auto, you can fly it manually and then use that dialog, the entry guidance dialog, to just sort of follow the lines down and try to keep it within the, the sort of channel, the safe channel. And so you can fly it manually all the way down and try that, but uh, you will probably use quite a lot more RCS propellant uh, doing that than it does. That might be a challenge for the intrepid shuttle pilot though, trying to beat out the computer as far as efficiency is concerned. 
Anyway, again, we're going to see it try to auto land, but there is a flaw. And the, the reason I'm keeping the flaw in is because it'll let me explain something to you. So that's why we're, we, I'm just gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna land exactly right, but there's a reason for it. So here we're coming in and it does a very nice graceful turn. It does have uh, two approach modes. It's got the overhead one and the direct one. And so we're doing the overhead one about if you're short on energy you would switch to the direct one so it doesn't go over the runway first and then come in. The aerodynamics of this are very different from the Space Audi shuttle. It gets less drag during re-entry and but that also means it gets less lift. Drag and lift are sort of related that way and so uh, it's not quite as easy to glide with it as the Space Audi shuttle was. So that has to be taken into consideration, and that's why we've got such a steep angle. Though partly the shuttle went as a steep, at a steep angle uh, to get more drag, so to slow down more accurately. But now you can see I'm pointing out during the live stream where it's trying to land. That's the line it's lining up with, and so it doesn't realize where our runway is properly. It's a little bit off, and so that's something that we're going to have to fix. It ultimately tries to get down here, and there's uh, Cape Canaveral HD, and yeah, for some reason it decided to go wrong there, I'm not too sure. There's some peculiars to uh, Cape Canaveral HD I've discovered. Uh, we'll find out another one soon. Uh, but yes, for some reason it wrecked that area of land too. Interesting. But in order to fix this, there is another script. It is measure runway.ks or measure rwy.ks. Initially, I set my little rover here in the wrong location. So I reran the script. And you have to press action group 9 in order to start. That's the start position. That's basically the start of the runway. You're telling the system where the runway is. And then for some reason, and this is the other peculiarity of Cape Canaveral HD, I got stuck here. My rover didn't want to move anymore here. So that's a worry. Uh, it might be a peculiarity of uh, Kerbal Constructs or something, but that's not supposed to happen. I've never encountered that on the shuttle runway before. But anyway, since I was stuck here, I decided to set the second marker there with Action Group 9 again. And then it uh, had the little red markers to show you what it has thought is the runway. So I had saved in orbit after uh, getting to orbit and time warping through the day and so I let out the payload and we tried again. And so there's the again manual deorbit burn after using the deorbit burn calculator. This time I tried to make it a little bit steeper but not as steep as I ultimately saw the numbers for the show were. I, uh, we just tried for 1.01 or something like that and then we started the burn a little bit earlier in order to try to stop it from using such a severe angle. But when you're trying to start the OPS3.KS script for entry under 122 kilometers, uh, you will want to be pointing prograde, relatively speaking. You don't want it to try to do a huge maneuver to turn prograde. So do turn close to prograde manually to help it out, and then it can pick up from there. After all, we're already in the atmosphere here as far as uh, KSP is concerned, so we don't want it doing too much to get to prograde. But unfortunately, uh, my attempt to so shade it towards having less energy coming in uh, did not help. Uh, we still had this severe angle, which at least seems to get a lot of cross range. There's that. Uh, you can see the path changing on the map uh, and it will be able to deviate from its current uh, flight path quite a lot. So that's good. So if you need the cross range for the shuttle, it seems to have the cross range. And it's doing roll reversals here as it continues flying the slope. And again, the little box is the uh, presumably the 30 seconds ahead box. And finally, we are approaching Cape Canaveral. But there is another flaw. I forgot to mention it, uh, but uh, you might have noticed that the parachute icon lit up. And I don't know why exactly. Probably when I was trying to type OPS3, but there's no space there. Somewhere along the way, I pressed the spacebar. Maybe when I was ejecting out the payload because that was staged. That was actually in the staging and I pressed spacebar to activate it. Uh, but at some point, I accidentally activated the parachutes uh, that are in the tail. And they're just supposed to be drag chutes. But unfortunately, if you stage them ahead of time, 
they have their altitude set to 5,000, 1,000, the defaults. And that's going to happen. And I don't realize that's going to happen because I've covered it up with the entry guidance thing here. Right, I can't see the staging here. So, as we get to 5,000 meters, the drag chute pops out. So, that throws us off. And uh, I humorously sort of go, what's all this about? No. And uh, ultimately, Julio uh, tells me to uh, cut the chute, darn it. And so I cut the chute. But of course, it's a little bit late to keep the accuracy. But this is instructive, you know. Uh, how well will it do now? It's lined up pretty well. And I, I think everybody will agree that it will have landed properly if not for that drag chute. But what will it do now? It is a little bit slow. But very good though. I mean, this whole... I can't imagine programming a thing to land like this. That's a very difficult thing to do. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy this quite a lot if they try it out. It can land at different locations. You can see the target option in the corner there. So right now we have the target as the KSC. Uh, if you do need to set the runway, and it barely makes it sort of there. Uh, if you do, do need to set the runway, the runway calculator, the measure runway script, will give you numbers that you have to put into uh, one of the files so that it knows where the runway is. So you're going to have to write those in after you get the measurement. It doesn't put, pop them into that script automatically because it could be for the KSC or it could be for Edwards or it could be some other location. So know that and I tried to break uh, desperately. Uh, I wasn't able to recover for some reason. That's something going on here. But anyway, there you have it. The Giulio Dandi shuttle. Uh, I'll put relevant links in the video description. It seems to work alright. I launched it with my own launch script as well. I didn't use my re-entry script with it yet. But anyway, the point is it survived. <laughs> That's very important in Realism Overhaul. Often the shuttle doesn't survive very well. So, I look forward to bringing you other shuttle videos thanks to the ease with which we can use this. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.